Now we need to figure out what the Q enclosed is going to be. Well, we have to figure out, uh, let's see, so what we were given here was rho. Uh, and remember that our formula for rho is like this. So if we just knew what volume was enclosed, we could figure out the charge that was enclosed. Well, the volume that's enclosed is kind of this volume here. It's hard to see on the board again, but it's the volume that's enclosed inside kind of the dashed portion of the Gaussian surface. The dashed portion of the Gaussian surface, I drew that dashed because you can't see it because it's inside the slab. So that's the, and that's where the charge is. Remember, there's no charge in front of the slab or behind the slab, only in the slab. We don't want to count this charge over here because this is outside the Gaussian surface. We just want to count it over here. Well, we need to then figure out what volume we've got here. Well, volume is, uh, how can we find the volume? Well, we can use the basic idea that if you have any kind of uh, regular solid where the sides are perpendicular to the base, the volume of something that has perpendicular sides is just the area of the base times the length of the side. Well, this space right here is um, the, we could use this as, say, the area of the base. Um, so that area is just going to be A. Now, what do we mean by the length of the side? What's that going to be here? Remember, we only want to count the length of the side that is inside the slab. Distance D. Exactly. That's right. So that's going to be... Um, basically this distance from here to here, which is the total length of the slab, which is D. So this is the volume of the slab that's enclosed in our Gaussian surface. The volume of the slab enclosed in the Gaussian surface is this. So now we know what the enclosed charge is going to be. It's the density times A times D. So we can plug that in for the enclosed charge. Good. Now there's one thing we could do right off the bat to simplify this formula. The yeah, the A's cancel. And this is why it turns out it doesn't matter whether you're using a cylinder or a box here. If I used a cylinder, it would have circular faces. But the volume of the cylinder would still be the area of the circular face times the distance, and those two areas are still going to cancel at this point. So we can use either a cylinder that's perpendicular to the slab or a box. All right, um, so then this becomes, then we can divide both sides by 2. Looks like I'm getting this formula. Which looks like it's correct. Excellent. Okay, so um, last time we talked about how to use Gauss's law for spherical symmetry. Now we're seeing how to do it for plane symmetry. Instead of drawing a spherical Gaussian surface, you might draw a box or a cylinder as your Gaussian surface. Uh, and then it's crucial to be able to figure out the enclosed charge from the density. And it's also crucial to see that on this Gaussian surface, the flux only emerges from the front face and the back face. There's no flux through the sides because the electric field is parallel to those sides. Okay? All right. Um, this is a good thing for us to go over. This actually, this is hard, but this is the type of thing that you're likely to see on the test. Uh, and we're still not done here because we've only figured out the electric field outside of the slab. We haven't yet figured out the electric field inside the slab. And again, that's, that's hard, but that's actually a typical type of test question. So that would be a good thing for us to talk about. Oh, let's come back to this for one second, though. Um, there's something that's a little bit weird about this. Um, this is almost a trick question. As you get further and further from the slab, is the electric field here going to get stronger, weaker, or stay the same? based on this formula, just based on this formula, as you get further and further from the slab, is the electric field going to get stronger, weaker, or stay the same? So we might use R for our distance from the slab. Um, well, does this formula say that increasing R will increase E, decrease E, or have no effect on E? Uh, Well, does the distance appear in the formula? No. No. 
So it has no effect. That's how we can tell. Does R affect any of these? Well, your distance from the slab doesn't change the charge density. It doesn't change how thick the slab is. And this is a physical constant. So changing R has no effect on any of these. So for uh, when you have infinite plane symmetry, the distance doesn't matter. Now this should seem kind of weird because it, normally when you get further from something, the field gets smaller. That's certainly the case for spherical symmetry. Uh, we probably probably uh, isn't worth the time to explain why this is correct here. It's based on the fact that this is infinite. This is so big that it doesn't, uh, in a sense, that it doesn't matter how far away you are from it. Um, but you can kind of see this. Remember that the electric field lines that come out of this are all going to be perpendicular to each other. Remember that if we draw electric field lines, when the electric fields get closer to each other, that means the field is stronger. And when Well, we already discussed that the electric field vectors are all pointing perpendicular <coughs> to the to the to the to the, uh, the this the front and the back face of the slab. But not to each other, right? Oh yeah. So I might have misspoke. What I wanted to say is that the electric field lines are all perpendicular to the slab, so they're all parallel to each other. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to say that they'd all be parallel to each other. Okay. Well, remember that if um, if electric field lines get closer. That means the electric field is getting stronger, right? And if the electric field lines get further, that means that the electric field is getting weaker. That's just a fact about electric field lines we learned last time. But since all the electric field lines here are emerging perpendicular to the slab, they're all parallel to each other, which means they can never get any closer to each other or any further from each other. Yeah. So that should kind of confirm that it really doesn't matter what your distance is from here. Okay. Um, something else I should say is, of course, in real life, nothing is really infinite in real life. So how, when, why would you ever need this in real life? Well, as long as um, the slab is much bigger than your distance from the slab, it acts like it's infinite. Um, so for example, if you think about, say, the floor of this classroom, and think about, say, uh, a little fly that was buzzing a millimeter above the floor, well, to the fly, the floor almost seems like an infinite slab, because it can't see the sides off to the edges. So if you're very close to the slab, um, uh, if you're very close to the slab and you're not close to one of the edges, you can approximate it as an infinite slab. Which means, again, that as long as you're close to the slab and far from the edges, the electric field doesn't depend on your distance from the slab. That's what we're getting from this formula. All right, now we have to do the harder part, which is to figure out the electric field inside of the slab. Um, so for example, we might try to figure out the electric field when we are, say, at this distance r from the slab. Uh, this distance r from the center of the slab. So before, when I drew the Gaussian surface, the Gaussian surface was going all the way, um, was going from outside the slab in front to outside the slab in back, because we were focusing on a point that was outside of the slab. But now the entire Gaussian surface will be inside of the slab. Um, to be symmetric, let's draw the Gaussian sur a Gaussian surface that goes from here to here, say. easy to draw, but I'm trying to draw a little box that's inside of the slab. And the front of the box here is this distance is um, this distance r in front of 0. And the back of the box is um, this distance r behind the 0 point. So this point right here is the very middle of the slab. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out, well, let's see what the question was. The question here was, Calculate um, the magnitude of the electric field, part D. What's the magnitude of the electric field inside the slab as a function of x? Oh, so I shouldn't be calling these r. I'd have to call these actually x. So this would be a point negative x. And 
and this is the point positive x. We want to know what's the magnitude of the electric field um, when we're this distance um, from the center of the slab, the distance x. Well, then I would draw a Gaussian surface inside the slab from positive x to negative x. 